Welcome to our channel. This video is part of a series based on the CITB book called Health, Safety and Environment Test for Operatives and Specialists. We guarantee that watching these videos is all you need to do to prepare for your final test. In each video, we will briefly cover a section's key points and then ask questions directly from the CITB book. This video focuses on section D, high risk activities, covering the following topics, site transport and lifting operations, working at height, excavations, and confined spaces and hazardous substances. To make it easy to move through the video series, you will find a link in the top right corner. The actual CSCS test usually takes about 45 minutes, and you need to answer at least 45 out of 50 questions correctly to pass. Before we dive in, please support us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. We appreciate it. Let us learn together. People being struck by moving plant is one of the most common causes of injury and death on construction sites. You should be provided with information about site traffic rules in your site induction. Well-organized sites will have segregated vehicle and pedestrian routes. Vehicle marshals should be used to control and ensure safe vehicle movements on site. You must be trained, competent and authorized to operate or signal plant on any site. Loading and storage areas on site should be located away from main pedestrian routes. Poor ground conditions, excessive speed and poorly distributed loads will increase the risk of a vehicle overturning. One of the most common accidents involving dumpers is overturning. You are walking on site and a large mobile crane reverses across your path. What should you do? Help the driver to reverse. Pass close to the front of the crane. Wait or find another way around the crane. Start to run so that you can pass behind the reversing crane. What should you do if you need to walk past someone operating a mobile crane? Run to get past the crane quickly. Try to catch the attention of the crane operator. Take another route so that you stay clear of the crane. Guess what the crane operator will do next and squeeze past. When is a sight vehicle most likely to injure pedestrians? When it is reversing. While digging out footings. While tipping into an excavation as it is lifting materials onto scaffolds. Why should you not walk behind a lorry when it is reversing? Most lorries are not fitted with mirrors. The driver is unlikely to know you are there. Most lorry drivers aren't very good at reversing. You will need to run, not walk, to get past it in time. The quickest way to your work area is through a contractor's vehicle compound. Which way should you go? Around the compound if vehicles are moving. Straight through the compound if no vehicles appear to be moving. Around the compound every time. Straight through the compound if no one is looking. When is site transport allowed to drive along a pedestrian route? During meal breaks, if it is the shortest route, only if necessary and if all pedestrians are excluded, only if the vehicle has a flashing yellow light. When you walk across the site, what is the best way to avoid an accident with mobile plant? Keep to the designated pedestrian routes. Ride on the plant. Get the attention of the driver before you get too close. Wear high-vis clothing. You need to walk past a 360-degree mobile crane. The crane is operating near a wall. What is the main danger? The crane could crash into the wall. You could be crushed if you walk between the crane and the wall. You could get whole body vibration from the crane. 
your hearing could be damaged by high noise levels from the crane. A forklift truck is blocking the route you need to take on site. It is lifting materials onto a scaffold. What should you do? Start to run so that you are not under the load for very long. Wait or take another route, but never walk under a raised load. Catch the driver's attention and then walk under the raised load. Only walk under the raised load if you are wearing a safety helmet. Which action should a worker take if they see mobile plant using a route intended only for pedestrians? Nothing. The driver will know what they are doing. Report this to their supervisor. Have a word with the operator at the end of the day. Just be careful in that area. Workers are on foot close to moving plant. Which one of the following is true? High-vis clothing will keep the workers safe if the plant is not reversing. The operator will see the workers because they have mirrors and CCTV. The workers should stay within the designated pedestrian routes. The workers will be safe if they are in a group. Which of the following signs means no pedestrian access? In which one of the following situations is it safer for a worker to speak to someone operating mobile plant? The operator knows the worker is there and the plant has stopped operating. The worker is wearing high vis and the plant is moving slowly. The operator can hear the worker and it is daytime. The worker is wearing PPE and the plant is moving slowly. What should you do if you see a dumper being driven too fast? Report it to the police. Keep out of its way and report it. Try to catch the dumper and speak to the driver. Nothing, as dumpers are allowed to speed. What is the main hazard associated with the movement of plant and machinery around site? Pedestrians walking too close to moving machinery and being crushed. Existing building collapse from vibrations of the moving machinery. Members of the public being poisoned by the exhaust fumes. Drivers getting motion sickness from the movement of the machine. What is the meaning of this sign? Pedestrian walkway only. No pedestrian access. Traffic approaching from each direction. Go slow. When moving plant or machinery around site, what should the operator look out for? Driving with the handbrake on. Driving with the lights on during the day. Speed signs and speed humps. Only driving with limited fuel. Where vehicles tip materials into excavations, what could be used as a safety precaution? Stop blocks. Extra speakers. Flashing lights. A siren. Why should engines be turned off before leaving a site vehicle? Select two answers. Leaving the engine running is a waste of fuel and is therefore a waste of construction budget. Members of the public are likely to jump into the vehicle and steal it. The sound of the engine may give other workers a headache if left on for too long. Drivers may accidentally operate levers when climbing into or out of the vehicle. Construction machines are not designed to be constantly left running.
If there are blind spots while using plant but work needs to continue, what actions should be taken? Use the existing mirrors on the plant. Request the plant be fitted with CCTV cameras. Use a vehicle marshal for this type of work. Work with a slinger. Your supervisor asks you to drive a dumper truck, but you have not driven one before. What should you do? Ask a trained driver how to operate it safely. Watch other dumpers to see how they are operated. Operate the dumper in an open area in case you make a mistake. Tell your supervisor that you are not trained and so cannot operate it. Which of the following is a recognised control measure when reversing a vehicle? Turning the sight radio off. Using a vehicle marshal. Turning on all the vehicle lights. Standing on the back to direct it. You think a load is about to fall from a moving forklift truck. What should you do? Keep clear, but try to warn the driver and others in the area. Run alongside the machine and try to hold on to the load. Run and tell your supervisor. Sound the nearest fire alarm bell. When can a mobile plant operator let people ride in or on the machine? Only if they have a long way to walk. Any time, as long as the cab door is shut. Any time, as long as the sight speed limit is not exceeded. Only if it is designed to carry passengers and has a designated seat. You see a lorry parking and it has a flat tyre. Why should you tell the driver? More fuel will be used by the lorry. It could be unsafe to drive the lorry. The lorry can only carry small loads. The driver will need to travel at a much slower speed. An excavator has just stopped work. Liquid is dripping and forming a small pool under the back of the machine. What could this mean? It is normal for fluids to vent after the machine stops. The machine is hot, so the diesel has expanded and overflowed. Someone put too much diesel into the machine before it started work. The machine has a leak and could be unsafe. A mobile crane is lifting a load, but the load is about to hit something. What should you do? Go and tell your supervisor. Go and tell the crane driver. Try and warn the person supervising or signalling the lift. Do nothing and assume that everything is under control. Which signal is being shown in this image? Danger. Emergency stop. Move forwards. Turn right or left. Move backwards. What is needed before supervising any lift using a crane? A mobile phone to talk to the crane driver. Full training and being assessed as competent. Written instructions from the crane hire company. Nothing. The crane driver will tell you what to do. Which of the following is a way of ensuring that a slinger or signaller is trained and competent? By trusting them when they say they are. By asking for evidence to be produced. By having them swear an affidavit. By making a handshake agreement. Which action will help to keep signalers safe? Provide yearly eye tests to confirm they have good vision. Provide body cameras to capture any incidents. Provide gloves for hand signals. Provide high-vis clothing so they are clearly visible.
Under what circumstance should a driver stop their vehicle immediately? If the vehicle is low on fuel. If the flashing beacon has stopped working. If they lose sight of their vehicle marshal. If they are operating in a one way system. When signalers are used, who should they be in contact with at all times? The machine operator, the site manager, their supervisor, pedestrians. What is the most important information a vehicle marshaller should know before directing a vehicle? How to signal vehicles and any relevant safety procedures. The type of materials being delivered to the site. The name and address of the driver for security reasons. The value of the materials as they could be stolen. To reduce the risk of overturning and accidents when not in use, how should earth moving vehicles be parked? With their buckets and blades raised in the air. With their buckets and blades facing the same way. With their buckets and blades lowered to the ground. With the buckets and blades facing opposite directions. Where risk of overturning is significant, what should vehicles be fitted with? Extra strength brakes. Rollover protective structures. Rops. Heavy duty graded tyres. A winch and pulley system. To prevent overturning, when should rear tipping lorries not be used for tipping operations? When on firm, level ground. On uneven or sloping ground. When a competent signaller is supervising. During redistribution of the load. Work at height is defined as work at any height where a person could fall and be injured. Every year, falls from height kill more construction workers than any other type of accident. Work at height should be avoided where possible. All equipment for working at height should be inspected before use. If you are involved in work at height, your employer should ensure that you have sufficient information, instruction and equipment so that you can work safely. There should always be a rescue plan if people are working at height. If you feel that the task you are completing at height is unsafe, stop work and report it to your supervisor. It would be classed as working at height if you were standing on the back of a lorry during loading or unloading activities. One of the leading causes of injury on construction sites is as a result of workers being struck by falling objects. Do not attempt to erect, alter or dismantle a mobile access tower unless you have been trained and you are authorised to do so. Make sure that there are no people, tools or equipment on a mobile access tower before you attempt to move it. The erection, alteration, inspection and dismantling of scaffolding should only be carried out by trained and authorised persons. Personal fall arrest equipment is designed to minimise the consequences if a fall occurs and will only protect an individual worker. All roofs should be treated as fragile until a competent person has confirmed they are not. Safe access and a safe working platform should be provided for all work on fragile roofs. Where should vehicles be loaded and unloaded? On an upward slope. On level ground. On a downward slope. On uneven ground. What is the purpose of a one-way system at a loading or unloading area? To eliminate the need to reverse. To allow faster speed limits. To reduce the speed limits. To increase the need to reverse. Accidents on site are often caused by materials falling from vehicles during what process? Refueling. Repainting. Cleaning. Unloading.
What should you do if you find a ladder that is damaged? Don't use it and make sure that others know about the damage. Don't use it and report the damage at the end of your shift. Try to mend the damage before using it. Use it if you can avoid the damaged part. Which image shows the safest method for using a stepladder? Which image shows the safe use of a ladder? What angle should a leaning ladder be used at? According to the work at height regulations, when can ladders be used for work? If it is high risk work for long periods of time, a ladder must never be used on site. If it is low risk work for a short period of time, when other people do not need to use it for access. Who should check a ladder before it is used? The site manager, the manufacturer, a site safety officer. The person who is going to use it. What is the best way to make sure that a ladder is secure and will not slip? Secure it at the top. Secure it at the bottom. Wedge the bottom of the ladder with blocks of wood. Ask someone to stand with their foot on the bottom rung. What is the correct way to climb a ladder? By having two people on the ladder at all times. Only using the ladder when wearing a safety harness. Having two points of contact with the ladder at all times. Having three points of contact with the ladder at all times. How many people are allowed on a ladder at the same time? Only one person. A maximum of two people. Three people, if it is long enough. One person on each section of an extension ladder. Which one of the following is not true when using podium steps? Podium steps are safe and can't topple over. Podium steps should be inspected before use. Podium step wheels must be locked before you get on. Podium steps can easily topple if you overreach sideways. Which of these statements is true about using a ladder to access a scaffold platform? All broken rungs must be clearly marked. Two people must be on the ladder at all times. It must be wedged at the bottom to stop it slipping. It must be secured and extend at least one meter above the platform. What should you do if you need to use a mobile access tower but the brakes don't work? Use some wood to wedge the wheels and stop them moving. Do not use the tower. Only use the tower if the floor is level. Get someone to hold the tower while you use it. What is the correct way to reach the working platform of a mobile access tower? Climb up the ladder built into the tower. Climb up the outside of the diagonal bracing. Lean a ladder against the tower and climb up that. Climb up the tower frame on the outside of the tower. A mobile access tower must not be used on what surface? Soft or uneven ground. A paved patio. An asphalt road. A smooth concrete path.
Which of the following is the safest method of accessing a mobile access tower? Climbing up the outside of the tower. Climbing a ladder inside the tower. Climbing a ladder outside of the tower. Climbing a rope on the outside of the tower. Which one of the following statements is true when referring to the wheels on mobile access towers? The wheels should be locked at all times. The wheels should be locked when the tower is in use. The wheels should be locked when the tower is being moved. The wheels should only be locked at the end of the day. Which one of the following is a safe way of moving a mobile access tower? Towing with a sight vehicle with a tow rope attached to the base. Using manual effort pushing only from the base. Using manual effort to pull from the top and the base. Towing with a sight vehicle with a tow rope attached to the top. When assembling a mobile access tower near overhead electric cables, which one of the following statements is true? The cables can be treated as dead if the work is going to take less than 30 minutes. The cables must be treated as live until it is confirmed they are dead. The cables do not present a danger because mobile access towers are insulated. Personal protective equipment, PPE, will keep workers safe until it is confirmed that the cables are dead. When working at height in a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, over or near to deep water, which item of personal protective equipment, PPE, should be worn? Wellington boots, life jacket, full face respirator, full body harness. What should a harness's lanyard be attached to when working in a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP? The control box. The MEWP handrail. A point on the structure or building you are working on. A designated anchor point within the platform or basket. A worker has been asked to operate a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, but has no training. What should they do? Get the work done as quickly as possible. Ask a workmate how to operate the MEWP. Tell their supervisor that they have no training. Operate the MEWP at break time when no one is around. A mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, must not be used on what surface? An asphalt road. A smooth concrete path. Soft or uneven ground. A concrete road. A worker is wearing a harness in a boom type mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, sometimes known as a cherry picker. Which one of the following should the harness have? A work restraint lanyard clipped to an attachment point in the basket. A work restraint lanyard clipped to the handrail of the basket. A fall arrest lanyard clipped to the structure being worked on. A fall restraint lanyard clipped to the control box of the machine. What does this symbol on a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, show? The location of the lowering controls for use in emergency. The location of the points where workers can lean over the platform. The guardrail height. The safe method of exiting the platform. Which one of the following should a worker do if a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, does not allow safe access to the place of work? Stand on the guardrails. Use a stepladder on the platform. 
Inform a supervisor that a larger MEWP is needed. Put pallets on the working platform. What should you do if you are required to use access equipment that you have not been trained to use? Do the job if it won't take long. Get a ladder instead. Stop work and speak to your supervisor. Ask someone else to do it. If you are working on a flat roof, what is the best way to stop yourself from falling over the edge? Use red and white tape to mark the edge. Put a large warning sign at the edge of the roof. Protect the edge with a guardrail and a tow board. Ask someone to watch you and shout when you get too close to the edge. Who should complete pre-use checks on ladders or other equipment used for working at height? The employer. The worker using the equipment. The supervisor. The site manager. Which two of the following statements are true about working on a roof? It is safe to try to walk near underlying roof supports. Wired glass roof panels are likely to be fragile. It is easy to see which roof surfaces are likely to be fragile. Workers should not work on a roof where there is no protection from falls. Asbestos and fibre cement roof sheets are unlikely to be fragile. What does the following sign mean? Fragile roof. Deep water. Safety boots must be worn. No running. A fragile roof needs to be repaired. Which of the following would be regarded as the safest method? Workers work from underneath using a mobile elevating working platform, MEWP. Workers access the roof by walking as close as possible to the underlying roof supports. Workers working on the roof wearing safety boots and helmets. Workers work from underneath using ladders and ropes for anchoring. Which one of the following statements is true of a person who has fallen and is suspended in a fall arrest harness? They will need to be rescued quickly. There will be no reason to call an ambulance. They will be safe in the harness for over an hour. They should be left to rescue themselves. Which one of the following statements is true of painting wooden ladders used in construction? Ladders should be painted orange to make them more visible. Ladders should never be painted as this could hide defects or damage. It is a good idea to paint ladders because this protects them. It is advisable to paint ladders to prevent them being stolen. A worker is storing materials above tow board height on a scaffold. How should people below be protected? Shout a warning to anyone passing below. Use string to secure the materials. Halt the work when people are approaching. Use a brick guard or suitable mesh netting. Under which one of the following circumstances is it safe for a worker to remove a protective cover from a deep service hole on site? The worker is wearing a safety helmet and waits until everyone else has left the site. The worker is authorised to do so and is protected from falling whilst the cover is not in place. The worker is wearing high vis and has told a few people on site that the cover will be removed. The worker has placed a safety cone by the hole so people will avoid the area. What is the maximum length of time that a worker should work from a stepladder in one position? Less than 30 minutes. Less than one hour. 
Less than 90 minutes. Less than two hours. Which one of the statements about storing materials on a working platform is correct? Materials can be stored unsecured, but they must be above guardrail height. Materials do not need to be secured if they are going to be there for less than an hour. Materials can be stored anywhere, even if they pose a trip hazard or block the walkway. Materials must be stored so they can't fall and the platform must be able to take their weight. What is the best way to stop people being hit by falling tools and materials when you are working above them? Make sure they are wearing safety helmets. Tell them you will be working above them and erect signs. Exclude people from below the work area with fencing and signs. Only allow authorised people underneath the work area. If you need to stack materials on a working platform, what is the best way to stop them falling over the tow board? Have brick guards or netting fitted to the edge. Put a warning sign on the stack. Build the stack so that it leans away from the edge. Cover the stack with polythene. To ensure the public is not put at risk from falling materials for the duration of work, what may be necessary? Pavement closure or diversion. Giving the public hard hats. Making pedestrians use the road. Giving the public high-vis clothing. If a person is struck by a falling object, what could be the negative consequence? They get fired. They get injured. They get a promotion. They get compensation. What piece of personal protective equipment, PPE, should be worn on sites where there is a risk of falling objects? Protective goggles. Hard hat. High-vis clothing. A safety harness. When is it safe to cross a fragile roof? Only when you can see fragile roof signs. Only if you do not walk on any plastic panels. When crawling boards with handrails are available to use. At any time, as long as you walk along the line of the bolts. What does this sign mean? Fragile roof. Take care when walking on roof surface. Load-bearing roof. The surface can be slippery when wet. Load-bearing roof. You can stand on the surface but not on any roof lights. Fragile roof. Use full protection measures and do not stand directly on the roof. What is the best way to stop people falling through voids, holes or fragile roof panels? Tell everyone where the dangerous areas are. Place secure, load-bearing covers over the dangerous areas and add warning signage. Cover the dangerous areas with safety netting and tell everyone to be careful. Mark the dangerous areas with red and white warning tape. A material that may hide fragile surfaces has been applied to a roof. What action should be taken? Nothing. The material applied should be fine. The fragile areas should be clearly marked and protected. Nothing. Workers should know to be careful. The fragile areas should be painted green. Which one of the following surfaces is not likely to be fragile? A reinforced concrete roof. A fibre cement sheet roof. A glass panel roof. A slate tiled roof. A scaffold guardrail must be removed to allow you to carry out a task. 
If you are not a scaffolder, can you remove the guardrail? Yes, if you put it back before you leave the site. Yes, if you put it back as soon as you have finished. No, only a scaffolder can remove the guardrail and put it back. No, only a scaffolder can remove the guardrail, but you can put it back. How can the safe load rating for a scaffold platform be identified? By asking the telehandler driver. By asking the principal contractor. Referring to the handover certificate or signage. The safe load is breached when the ledgers start to deflect. What should you do if you think that the scaffolding you are working from is not safe? Report it to your supervisor at the end of the shift. Try to make the repairs yourself and then report it to your supervisor. Report your concerns to your supervisor straight away. Ignore it and wait for the scaffolders to identify any problems. What should you do if you notice your harness or attachment is damaged? Stop and tell your supervisor straight away. Use it and tell your supervisor at the end of the day. Use a colleague's harness instead. Stop and tell your supervisor but carry on using it until it is replaced. What is an inertia reel? A retractable fall arrester. A horizontal fall arrester. A pulley operated fall arrester. A rope-based fall arrester. Which of the following best describes the purpose of personal fall prevention equipment? It is designed to prevent falls from occurring. It is designed to minimise the consequences if a fall occurs. It is designed to protect more than one person if a fall occurs. It is designed to be used in confined spaces only. When are personal fall arrest systems to be used? Only as a last resort. The majority of the time. In the morning. During a night shift. Who should know how to carry out pre-use checks on fall arrest equipment? The site managers. All workers who use it. All workers on site. The apprentice workers. Excavations should always have a safe means of access and egress, such as a secured ladder. Excavations should be inspected at the start of every shift or after events that might affect stability. The most accurate way to identify the location of buried services is through the use of trial holes. If you damage an underground service, stop work, do not touch anything, and report it. Permit systems are often used where people are working in confined spaces. There should always be a rescue plan if you are working in a confined space. If you are working in a confined space and the gas alarm sounds, get out immediately. You are in a deep trench. A lorry backs up to the trench and the engine is left running. What should you do? Put on ear defenders to cut out the engine noise. Ignore the problem, as the lorry will soon drive away. See if there is a toxic gas meter in the trench. Get out of the trench quickly. What should you do if you see the side supports move when you are working in an excavation? Work in another part of the excavation instead. Keep working and watch to see if they move again. Make sure that you and other workers get out quickly. Nothing. The sides are expected to move all the time. What is the main hazard when working in an excavation? Breathing in hazardous dust from the earth. Cuts and abrasions from the trench sides. Trips and falls due to the space restriction. Crushing. 
if the sides are not supported. When should an excavation be battered back or stepped? If it is more than five metres deep. If there is water in the bottom of the trench. If there is a risk of the sides falling in regardless of depth. If any buried services cross the excavation. What do guard rails around the top of an excavation prevent? Toxic gases collecting in the bottom of the trench. People falling into the trench and being injured. The sides of the trench collapsing. Rainwater running off the ground at the top and into the trench. What is the safest way to get into and out of a deep excavation? Use an excavator bucket. Use the buried services as steps. Use the shoring or trench supports. Use a fixed staircase. What equipment should be used when digging near to underground electrical services? An excavator. A jackhammer. A pick and fork. An insulated spade. What does it mean if a run of coloured marker tape is found when digging? The excavation now requires side supports. There are buried human remains and you must tell your supervisor. There is a buried service and further excavation must be carried out with care. The soil is contaminated and you must wear respiratory protective equipment, RPE. According to the guidance on underground service pipes, what does a yellow service pipe carry? Water. Gas. Electricity. Telecoms. What three things should you do before entering a confined space that has sludge at the bottom? Identify what the sludge is. Have the correct training. Put on a disposable dust mask. Make sure that the space has been tested for gas. Throw something into the sludge to see how deep it is. What should you do if your permit to work in a confined space will run out before you finish the task you are carrying out? Hand the permit over to the next shift. Carry on working until the job is finished. Leave the confined space before the permit runs out. Ask your supervisor to change the date on the permit. What should you do if you are in a deep trench and you start to feel dizzy? Get out, let your head clear and then go back in again. Carry on working and hope that the feeling will go away. Make sure that you and any others get out quickly and report it. Sit down in the trench and take a rest. Why is methane gas dangerous in confined spaces? Give two answers. It can explode. It makes you hyperactive. It makes you dehydrated. You may not have enough oxygen to breathe. You will not be able to see because of the dense fumes. What is the most important reason why people should be trained and competent before they are allowed to enter a confined space? Confined spaces never contain breathable air. Confined spaces are only found on house building sites. Confined spaces always contain flammable or explosive gases. Confined space entrants need to understand the potential hazards. What is the main reason for having a person positioned immediately outside a confined space 
while work is taking place inside it. To carry out a risk assessment for the work. To check compliance with the method statement. To start the rescue plan if there is an emergency. To supervise the work inside the confined space. What is the main cause of people dying while working in a confined space? Lack of oxygen. Too much oxygen. Presence of methane. Cold conditions leading to hypothermia. What might happen if the level of oxygen drops below 8% in a confined space? Your hearing could be affected. There is a high risk of fire or explosion. You could become unconscious. You might get dehydrated. When working in a confined space, what is it a sign of if there is a smell of rotten eggs? Oxygen. Methane. Carbon dioxide. Hydrogen sulphide. What is it likely to mean if the soil gives off a strange smell when digging? The soil contains a lot of clay. The ground could be contaminated. The soil has been excavated before. The ground has been used to grow crops in the past. Asbestos-containing materials, ACMs, can be difficult to identify. Asbestos is made up of hazardous microscopic fibres which can easily be inhaled. If you think a material contains asbestos, always assume it does. Stop work, warn others and report it to your supervisor. Your employer should ensure that exposure to hazardous substances is prevented or adequately controlled. Health and safety information for hazardous substances should be detailed in a COSH assessment. Control measures for working with hazardous substances should be monitored regularly. Wet cement and concrete can cause skin burns and dermatitis if they are in direct contact with your skin. Lead is toxic. The most common route of entry into the body is via the mouth, ingestion. Where are you most likely to come across asbestos? In a house built between 1950 and 2005. In any industrial building built after the year 2000. In any building built or refurbished before the year 2000. Asbestos has now been removed from all houses and buildings. Breathing in asbestos dust is most likely to cause which of the following? Lung diseases. Throat infections, dizziness and headaches, aching muscles and painful joints. Exposure to asbestos fibres may result in which illness? Heart disease, skin cancer, dermatitis, lung cancer. How can asbestos be correctly identified? The distinct colour of the dust. By getting a sample analysed in a laboratory. It is clear from the strong smell of the dust. By putting a piece in water and seeing if it dissolves. Which one of the following statements about asbestos is true? Asbestos fibres are most likely to enter the body through the skin. Asbestos fibres only cause health problems for smokers. Asbestos in buildings must always be removed regardless of condition. Asbestos fibres are most likely to enter the body through inhalation. Cement-based roofing sheets are a common material which can often contain what hazardous substance? Rust. Dry rot. Termites. Asbestos.
What is the main immediate hazard from kneeling directly on wet cement? Skin burns. Dermatitis. Eczema. Skin rash. What does a COSH assessment cover? Working safely in confined spaces. Lifting heavy loads and how to protect yourself. The assessment of noise levels and how to protect your hearing. Hazardous substances and how to protect yourself when using them. Who should explain the health risks and safe method of work you need to follow? The COSH assessment before you start work with a hazardous substance. A health and safety executive, HSE, inspector. The site first aider. Your supervisor or employer. The site security people. What is the first thing you should do if you find an unmarked container that you think might contain chemicals? Smell it to see what the chemical is. Move the container to somewhere safe. Put the container in a bin to get rid of it. Ensure that it remains undisturbed and report it. How is it possible to tell that a product is hazardous? It will always be in a cardboard box. It will always be in a black container. By the shape of the container or packaging. By warning symbols on the container or packaging. What does the word sensitizer mean on the packaging of a substance? It should not be used under any circumstances. It must be mixed with water before it can be used. That it could cause allergic reactions when handled. It is safe to use without personal protective equipment, PPE. Identify which of the following signs is associated with a substance being toxic if swallowed or inhaled. If warnings about how to work with hazardous substances are not followed, what is a likely consequence for workers? Good health. Increased fitness level. Decreased fitness levels. Ill health. What should employers check regularly if you are working with hazardous substances? Your mood. Your family. Your health. Your wages. A worker is using a new substance when they start to feel ill. What should the worker do? Stop work and report it to a supervisor or manager on site immediately. Nothing. It is acceptable to feel ill with certain substances. Continue with the work, but report it to the supervisor later. Enter the details into an incident report and continue to work with the substance. When working through a construction health and safety checklist, which of these hazardous substances should be identified? Lead, solvents, cement, asbestos. Asbestos, cement, paints, noise levels. Noise levels, solvents, dust, paint. Vibration levels, noise levels, asbestos, cement. Which of the following tasks could place a worker at the greatest risk of lead poisoning if control measures were not put in place? Plastering a ceiling in a new build home. Building a wall out of old stone. Cutting timber in a roof construction. Sanding down some old paintwork. Congratulations! You are a step closer to success. Keep learning until you reach your goal. You can find a link in the top right corner to go to the next video.